A very warm welcome. Today we have with us Mr. Ajay Awali, who is the Head of Information Technology at Aqua Farm Chemicals. A very warm welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us at CXTV. Yeah, thanks for the invitation, Mr. Pope. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to have you. So, you know, before we uh, dive into the entire discussion, especially around how uh, chemical manufacturing industry is currently working around, uh, we would actually like to know in ways about uh, you, about how your journey has been so far. If you can share some insight with our uh, CXCT audience. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for the opportunity, first of all. Yeah, okay. So, uh, see, I'm a hardcore, you know, IT person since my beginning of the career. So I, I started my career uh, long back in 2000, early 2000, I would say. And uh, the entire career is into manufacturing IT, which is you know, a specific area in uh, today's IT world, I would say. Because uh, when somebody says IT, then it's uh, always somebody thinks like it's development, it's programming, it's coding. But manufacturing IT is you know, definitely a different uh, stream altogether. And uh, they are good project managers and uh, they are good uh, understanding of uh, the technology actually as an ecosystem, basically. So uh, I have started my career uh, from a media company, which is a craft earlier, and then, of course, moved into some IT service industries and then uh, got into real the manufacturing companies, which are, you know, into mechanical industries like crane manufacturing, then road building equipment manufacturing. Then moved into uh, food manufacturing, starch manufacturing companies, and today I think it's uh, chemical manufacturing. So I've seen, you know, uh, all the uh, manufacturing sectors, I would say, uh, except the uh, automobile, which is a big sector. Mm-hmm. 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 So all on more than 22 years of experience uh, in the manufacturing IT sector. And uh, I've been leadership responsibility since last more than 15 years, uh, like uh, well, presence in the global uh, companies also and Indian companies also. Yeah. Thank you, Naminda, know, actually. And uh, you know, we look forward to uh, have some uh, valuable discussion around it and gain uh, some uh, knowledge for our sexy to the audience around. So, uh, also, you know, when we are actually talking about the uh, chemical manufacturing industry, so, we would like to understand that uh, we are seeing a lot of digital trans- transformation happening. So, how is it impacting and what opportunities and challenges does it present for the companies in this sector? You see, digitalization, I think it's uh, definitely not a choice today, uh, whether it's a manufacturing company or it's a fintech company or any other company. See, because I think uh, right from government to private sector, digitalization is the only way to move forward. And uh, fortunately, I think Indian manufacturing industries uh, they have seen the potential of digital and uh, they have started this digitalization since, you know, uh, I would say one and a half uh, decade. Uh, it's not new. Uh, of course, there are different uh, IT jargons came out in between. Uh, many different words uh, people have, you know, evolved for IT. And uh, but, but the base is automation. The base is digitalization. Absolutely. And uh, as a leader, I think we followed that uh, since more than a decade. Uh, Specifically, if you ask me about chemical industries, yeah, they are also, you know, today not behind the curve. Uh, but yes, uh, from the sp- uh, speed of, you know, uh, catching the train, then a little behind than the mechanical uh, uh, design industries or any other manufacturing industries. So, farm and chemical, I would say they are running, uh, you know, uh, 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 in tandem, but a little behind than the curve. But most of the companies are, you know, uh, trying to uh, grow in digitalization and they have, you know, found a good value out of it. Uh, now, what the value I would say? No, uh, or what is the benefit? When company invest into technology, of course they look for some output of that. What we call it as an ROI. Okay, without ROI, nobody invests. Uh, so first of all, digitalization gives you, you know, uh, the quality of work, which is very important in technical industry or in farm industry, because they have to adhere to certain norms, certain you know uh, certifications and the quality products. Then they get a good trust, and digitalization gives that trust. Because being a human person, a manual uh, process normally achieves you know less than hundred percent of the output in terms of quality. But if it is a hundred percent digitalization, I think uh, one can trust hundred percent. The output is really uh, qualified as per the industry norms, and then uh, the product is out. Now, uh, what is digitalization for man- for manufacturing or specific to chemistry things or chemical industry? Is you know uh, helping to reduce the time first of all. Uh, but when I say time. Then it's a research time, it's a manufacturing time, it's a, a dispatch time, and all these areas are associated with the manufacturing processes. 
uh, when I say chemical specifically, then they have, uh, you know, they are more keen on the specifications of the chemicals. So you need the right data at the right time with the right speed, and which is possible only with digital. So uh, I think uh, irrespective of you know chemical or any other manufacturing, data plays a role, digitalization plays a role. And in my career, I think I have seen, uh, as I said, uh, a lot of product portfolios. So the exact implication of the digital tools uh, with respect to that product. Uh, so I have applied it most uh, and similarly to the chemical industry today. Like, uh, every industry in today's case, without digitalization, we can't. Uh, no, uh, absolutely for the and also uh, data is the tool. We are calling tool for uh, every industry right now. So yeah, apart from that, when we are talking about uh, especially the chemical industry, or also as in general, even the government is talking about uh, sustainability and environment. So it, it has become a critical concern with globally. So. How are chemical manufacturers adapting their processes and products to align with uh, the just environmental sustainability goals as well as regulation? I think it's a, a really a valid question because I mean, uh, forcing uh, the human future. You now, uh, I think uh, sustainability is a question mark today. If you see any industry, I think, in respect of chemical, I would say environment is uh, is as a question mark. I and mean, whether it's a paper industry, it's a pharma industry, is a mechanical industry. Uh, where you know uh, all these metals are you know taken out from the soil and then they are processed or for paper industry we cut the trees or chemical industries we you know uh, extract the chemicals from soil or from water and then use it so these are definitely an imp impacting points on the uh, uh, social uh, uh, you know environment uh, earth basically and uh, looking at uh, the sustainability you uh, being you know they have uh, nominated or you can say they have followed certain practices which are controlling the damage to the earth, which is a basic, you know, school-level questions are coming out. And these are really applicable to, you know, a mature company uh, who are into uh, chemical manufacturing. And uh, the other companies who are really, uh, you know, not good to the environment. So, the city will see something more good to the oil can use it. I mean, uh, it's not uh, good for the environment. It's definitely harmful. So, government or uh, uh, the industries, uh, uh, the association of industries, they have followed certain norms and they have produced uh, certain qualifications, certifications also. When we talk about government norms, definitely they are there. For, say, food industry, FDA is there. For chemical industry, a lot of certifications are there. And uh, 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 the, the you know, countries like US or maybe the countries in Europeans, they are more strict on uh, the product which is incoming to their countries. They are less, less bothered on the outcome of that. But yeah, for incoming, they are uh, very much bothered. Yeah. And the rest of the countries like us who are, you know, dependent on the export projects or export business, then we have to follow those norms. Which uh, I would say which really uh, is a good thing that they are strict so that we follow the output of our uh, company or the product. But I think irrespective of any uh, restrictions given by government or by the business, I think being a human and uh, uh, on the search, we have to you know, take care of uh, more the earth, the environment, etc. So digitization plays a you know, vital role here. Why? Because humans can make certain errors, but digital systems cannot. Because they know only the one and zero. If you set one, then they will produce one only. If the zero comes out, they will reject. So uh, taking this phenomena, uh, the right operation, the right controls of the uh, parameters uh, from the output, Media and uh, from the uh, dispatch area, I think digital system plays a vital role. So uh, I'll just take an example here because it's more related to the environment. Because in my earlier organization, it was a food manufacturing industry, starting in the factory industry, but still a lot of chemicals are involved in the end in the process of blending, basically. And uh, when the product is coming out, there is certain residue of the entire process, and that was you know uh, getting out. And uh, which was harmful to the environment. So, uh, HCL, for example, or some sulfur is out. And that is not uh, correct to spread it in the soil or in the river. So, we put an objective uh, for the zero liquid discharge for that organization. And it's really possible because uh, certain projects were you know, nominated, certain project leaders were nominated. People worked on that. They took the digital system as a huge there. 
we analyze the data, you know, uh, make the project plans, and then uh, use the system uh, to come out to certain uh, acceptable levels. And when they achieve the zero discharge, uh, uh, ZLD basically. And uh, you, uh, it's a uh, one step towards uh, the survival of the nature. And this is playing the role. I'm happy about that. Yeah. So, you know, uh, could you uh, share some uh, measures which are currently uh, adapted by various other uh, chemical manufacturing industries to tackle such uh, kind of uh, harmful residues that are, uh, that, that are left behind and that, that are harmful to the environment? If there are certain measures being taken at the year one. Two, two things here. Uh, I think the entire process, uh, every company has to map their processes in such a way that the residue or the, uh, you know, uh, uh, I would say dispatching certain things outside uh, in the soil or in the river has to be controlled. And for that purpose, uh, they should relook look into their manufacturing process first. Because what are it that is raw material they are consuming and uh, how it is, you know, impacting to the entire process and coming out as a byproduct because normally it is a byproduct okay uh, either somebody sells that or somebody just disposes into the a- atmosphere but disposing to the atmosphere is definitely not for the choice i would say because that that is harmful and is damaging the environment now uh, typically in my current company we are you know producing a uh, hcl as a uh, uh, byproduct and we cannot dispose that into soil so we are there uh, to to have a zero liquid discharge as a company, and we have achieved that since, since you know, more than a decade, actually. And the uh, government put uh, certain uh, norms to such industries who are producing harmful chemicals. Actually, we worked on that. We followed the many uh, standards there. We revamped, re-engineered the chemical manufacturing processes, developed uh, certain systems for uh, taking help of the right automation, why right automation? Because if you have an ERP, then ERP will design uh, certain bonds with the right quantities, with some add-ons to that, to have your zero ZNP. So within the process itself, it, it will be distributed to different uh, product areas and will be absorbed into that pro- product without deviating their output parameters. So that's how uh, that ZNP is achieved uh, here in, in, in my company specifically. But still, if you go outside, I mean, uh, in uh, industry areas, uh, and you you can hear few companies are disposing such chemicals outside, but government is taking the right decision to close their factories. And in the past, these things have happened. So such a hardened control is definitely required. But before that, I think uh, each human should think of you know uh, having these standards to be adhered, which will save the environment and digital system support is. Any way there uh, to, to make this achieve. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of government, the organizations, if they are more uh, cautious in terms of what uh, they are uh, doing to the environment by uh, making their byproducts. So, I think that we, the entire process would be a smoother one and uh, we can avoid such kind of uh, harmful uh, emissions. So, uh, apart from that, uh, we think like uh, we, uh, we are actually seeing so much of uh, global disruptions, which are uh, which have actually highlighted the importance of uh, residual supply chain. So, uh, how are chemical manufacturers enhancing the residual energy of their supply chain to uh, withstand and, uh, the unexpected challenges? Okay, see, uh, definitely. So, if you see today's world and its supply chain, it's very complicated, okay? It's very complicated. Uh, so, so for example, right from a product of uh, a hot food to a manufacturer's, uh, you know, uh, manufacturer's consignment into a container and shipping it to some different country. So it varies like that. But both are supply chains. Okay. So if you order, you know, with the app some food, uh, you get that at your home delivery. It's a supply chain because somebody is bringing that uh, product to your home, and uh, it happens. Okay. But for for a manufacturing company and especially for you know export industries, uh, they have a huge challenge because a lot of parameters are impacting to the supply chain, and the certain parameters are there. Uh, very low, there is no control. So, for example, the war situation, because we have you know suffered a lot with the Russia and Ukraine war situation. So, because the entire channel was in stuck uh, at that time, uh, which was going through the uh, European Sea and then reaching to the 
Eastern countries. And we suffered a lot. And uh, uh, to develop a parallel way uh, in, in such a small time, it's definitely not possible. So we have to plan the manufacturing. We have to, you know, uh, uh, do dispatch in a, a strategic way wherein the manufacturing of other companies should not also happen because they are dependent upon your raw material. Or we are dependent upon the raw material with some XYZ company and they are shipping it to us. So they should also strategically ship the product and they should also strategically order that pro product. So it's a chain. That's why it's a supply chain. And uh, uh, the, the parameters of the cost or the parameters of the vehicles, the mechanical resources, those can be, you know, uh, overcome. And uh, uh, that's the beauty of the uh, supply chain. And there are certain occasions uh, which are definitely not uh, in uh, human's hand. For example, COVID as a situation wherein uh, all the ports were stuck. Nothing was moving uh, because uh, there, there was a threat on the material itself. The virus can travel with the material and then uh, with the country exchange, it can spread. So, with you know, those kind of lock-ins, you, you cannot move. So, supply chain have suffered a lot since uh, uh, last uh, couple of years or more than that because of the COVID and then for the overall situation. Today also, I think uh, we can hear some more situation and then the next month, I think we will get some impact on the supply chain. So, people must be, you know, hardly working on this area. They must be planning their material. They must be planning their, you know, uh, logistics area. And, uh, uh, manufacturing process also, and, and and they will you know overcome at least I I would say it's it's all about planning. It's all about uh, you know uh, taking the parameters into consideration and uh, mutual understanding between uh, a requisitioner and a demand supplier. Simply so that's how it works. Absolutely. So you know as you rightly mentioned, supply chain vulnerabilities, vir especially in unexpected locations, uh, you have to uh, have a plan, and that's the only way out. And so, you know, uh, apart from that, uh, when we are talking about the technological uh, developments, uh, we have this Industry 4.0 technologies like uh, IoT, AI, which is actually reshaping the entire manufacturing industry. So, uh, how do you think that these technologies will leverage within the chemical manufacturing sector to actually optimize the operation and improve the product quality? Yeah, so uh, so when I talk about uh, digital, I think uh, these are the resources or these are the players of the digital, okay? When we talk about AI, when we talk about IoT, I think these are the organs, I would say. When we call a digital as a system or a body, then these are the organs, uh, you know, keeps life this entire digital as a body. So specifically, I will take one by one uh, these examples because I mean, these are uh, big areas uh, by itself, you know, in their own subject. So if I talk about IoT, I think... Uh, uh, today, uh, though it looks as a small area uh, of data capturing and giving the right information, but it plays a vital role when it combines, uh, when it combines in a bunch. So, for a small company, uh, example, uh, I can tell you for a plant or its manufacturing processes, I think a lot of sectors, a lot of sections are involved. And these sections are mechanical sections, wherein, you know, uh, the physical human is working there, the physical machines are working there. And uh, these activities are time-bound activities. A lot of resources are involved in those activities. But there is no awareness on the capturing of data on that. So, if one can think of enhancing that area, then he should have some data of that, some history of that, and then he can think of some strategy and enhance that. So, IoT plays a vital role there, or digital plays a vital role there, because it gives you a region of data. It's visual data, it's behavior, it's uh, convergence, consumption, consumption pattern, and then what it can ask for future. You can easily predict with certain dashboards by putting some analytical logic there, or maybe you know AI programming, and then one can easily take decision. So for example, a boiler, you know, is taking X quantity of cells of coal to produce, you know, uh, X Y Z uh, tons of water into vapors, and it is taking, you know, since uh, last uh, say five years that data is captured. And it has some variation. Okay, sometimes it takes one ton, sometimes it takes five ton, fifteen ton. So why that variation? So all this digital data, a system analyzes, put certain uh, you know algorithm to uh, reduce the consumption and do some corrections into uh, boilers technology. Then they can achieve uh, you know uh, redu reducing the time or maybe in terms of uh, what does this basically? So I just talked about one small area, man. Because if you consider the plant, there are several areas. Uh, it's just one area I talked about. For example, energy. Energy is the biggest area and it is applicable to all the industries. Of course, without energy, we cannot do and we cannot survive also. 
okay and energy is a huge cost huge cost to any company even you know it's a huge cost for us to live in a flat or even a house actually and you have to take care of the energy because normally we save that at, at home but in industry how to save it first of all how to analyze where it is getting consumed more and then take action to save it so digital systems can give you a right vision of uh, the right consumption and then it will ask you to take certain actions even the operations can be you know uh, human less if you have the right ai system in picture and specifically if you have a genetic ai in picture then your decisions will be also taken by the systems and it will be cured so that's a futuristic step uh, in manufacturing i'm talking about but it's not far uh, because you know a lot of robotics is coming into picture uh, the company like tesla car manufacturing have all the robots they're working in their uh, plan so for chemical or for pharma or for any other sector i think the picture is not far So you know uh, when we actually discussing about chemical industry, our safety and regulatory compliance uh, has always been a critical concern. So uh, could you share uh, some insights into how organizations manage safety and compliance effectively while actually maintaining the operational efficiency? So uh, say uh, normally people think like safety and compliances are a burden on the uh, processes in terms of commercial burden. I would say. but now i think uh, this generation has understand without safety and compliances they cannot move forward and the government and other uh, new certification uh, bodies they have put the norms to sustain with all safety and uh, compliance front so today people are focusing on that no doubt about it and specifically the companies who deals with the entire world they have to i mean in respect of their choices they have to follow up so uh, digital definitely plays a role So I remember, you know, twenty uh, years back, a company, you know, taking safety and compliance as a part. So people were really uh, recording the things manually in a register and observing certain things and uh, writing an essay on any incident, and then asking you know, somebody to read that and then, you know, take an action. So uh, that era was a really difficult era, and uh, uh, based on to such information. There was not the right action, or not right understanding. I think, and from compliance point of view, also people were not knowing what compliance is applicable to which process, which product. That awareness was not there. Today, I think a lot of tools are there on the compliance. Uh, a lot of companies are coming with the compliance tools. So for example, on big fours, I mean, they have their own compliance tools. If you really ask them to, you know, implement for your sector, they will implement for your sector. Where the auto feed will come. They will give you the right alerts at right uh, time, and people will act on those, and will comply. So it's a quite uh, simple and straight process. Because I have personally implemented uh, a solution uh, which was from a big four in my last organization, and it was wonderful, you know, the fantastic tool. It was auto feeding all the uh, compliances related to that product and that sector, and uh, those were you know listed, and uh, we had assigned the right champions to each sector. And that champion was taking action. He was, you know, uh, updating that uh, area with his timelines, with his name, and with what everybody has done. So all compliances was, you know, part of that software process. So legal team was also involved, and uh, mm. this was, you know, a wonderful drive. I would say. For safety, also it's a safety thing. I mean, today a lot of features are there in the industries, uh, and uh, normally uh, the work in the industry. The labor work basically happens with the contractors, and contractors try to save some money by giving less resources to the people, and they don't care about safety. So, for example, uh, we are helmet wearing or safety shoes wearing. So, people try to save money there, but they don't understand. I mean, it's for their life. Uh, so, how to observe that? So, and then my current organization also we have put a lot of uh, CCTV cameras. Who are you know uh, today AI built cameras, and they identify. Uh, from a distance, whether you know people have, we are wearing people are wearing helmets, or they have the right safety shoes in place, with the right uh, fluorescent jackets to observe them from some difficult areas. So all this recognition is happening with the system. There is no physical touch. Physical eyes are watching the center and reporting. The system is generating under if there is any fog, and immediately the action is taken. So you can you can say you no know, lot of uh, incidents, lot of near misses are getting. Uh, cured from the digital system. Okay, it's a preventive action, basically. Yeah, the entire digitalization process has actually changed our lives, and uh, with digitalization and also COVID coming in, 
uh, people have again not just the but even the industry have got uh, safety conscious uh, at the same time. So you know, uh, apart from this, uh, you would like to understand that uh, in your opinion, uh, when we talk about the concept of uh, reshoring and, and uh, localization. Which has actually gained so much of attention. So, are you observing any trends where uh, chemical manufacturing companies are considering their global supply chain strategies in favor of more localized production? Um, yeah, I think I have uh, uh, an opinion of you know both the sides uh, also this uh, uh, sort of uh, phenomenon. I would say, but sure or localization definitely has a value, I and mean, it was there uh, if you go two decades back. The entire thing was, you know, uh, localized. The entire thing was, you know, uh, a short kind of thing. Uh, in between, uh, the, there was a era where, you know, uh, the offshoring kind of thing came into picture. A lot of third parties were involved. A lot of solutions were involved. Today also, there are solutions for helping uh, the industries uh, on the supply chain front, I would say. say for example, many uh, procurement tools are there in the market. But if you talk about SAP itself, then SAP has a riba, for example. And uh, multiple uh, uh, bidding tools are available, multiple uh, e-sourcing tools are available. People are using that, no doubt about it. But they need some captive resources in-house and who can work uh, on this kind of things because that 100% uh, uh, offshoring of uh, such activities which are critical to the production is definitely not possible. Okay? It's, it's, it's not a system or it's not you know, uh, a tool which can be uh, taken from outside and applied and then given back like a leasing kind of thing. But it uh, it has to be a captive in nature. Uh, and then uh, uh, it should also enhance in within, basically. So if you talk about the entire procurement of supply chain, then the major two parts are uh, your uh, engineering bind, your raw material bind, and your logistics. All this front, you know, uh, today, uh, localization is also important. And I would say, you know, uh, even... Uh, an accountability or responsibility to third party with the right commercials and with the right agreements is also one of the area or one of the way to uh, get the outcome of that. And uh, both the things are running parallel, I would say. There certain industries, they believe in uh, localization, they believe in reshoring. There is no harm on that also. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the industries who are really uh, lean in nature, they believe uh, all uh, uh, lean aspects uh, or outsourcing, basically. And they do the outsourcing or the, the offshoring, etc. But both are effective, in my opinion. Both are effective, both are producing the output if you have the right contracts in place and right resources to manage those. Simply. Okay, you know, lastly, we would actually like to know from you that uh, from your opinion, what would be the tech priorities in the uh, or the tech focus so areas in the next four to four years to come by? Okay, for manufacturing, I think I would say the first and uh, primary thing is uh, the security. Okay, the cyber security, the the uh, uh, security for their own systems, their digital processes. See, because manufacturing is normally not <coughs> a front end, or you can say uh, front head companies who adopt the new technologies. Okay, normally they go with the case studies and then they adopt the solutions. So that's why they don't have a threat of uh, Having a you know misleading system uh, implemented and then uh, running their business something like that, so that normally doesn't happen. But they should worry on the protection of that system, the uh, threat which is associated with that, and uh, uh, take the right actions there. So, for example, uh, any manufacturing company has uh, two sectors: one is the operational technology, one is their uh, business uh, technology. Say for example, ERP or certain tools comes into business processes and the our manufacturing processes, they have their own softwares to run. So both should be protected well, both should be you know, uh, integrated first of all and uh, uh, the right enhancement of those with the right security is the, it should be a priority, I would say in my opinion, should be a priority for the manufacturing sector. It is because it's a chemical industry, it's a manufacturing industry, automobile industry, whatever. I think cyber security is going to be a big challenge uh, for, for everyone. And we have seen a lot of you know, incidents uh, in the last uh, uh, four or five years. Uh, many pharma companies got you know, impacted on this because they were not updated. And uh, a couple of days back only, I have heard one of the cases uh, where a printer company got you know, uh, attacked. 
So defense, sir. Uh, in the reports, the published uh, are stating the amount of ransom attached to the hacker in all of Athena's industry. So I completely agree that uh, cyber security, with so much of the technological advancement, I think uh, cyber security will actually gain a lot of more concern and safety would uh, become a uh, little difficult to tackle with that. Sorry. Right. So this is this is I mean uh, uh, should be the defense should be on a top priority because you have to survive you have to run your business. See technology adoption can be a choice actually, right? Because based on two case studies, you can take a decision to go for the technology or not. Anyway, without technology, you are surviving with the current technology, so that's not an issue. But if you have to catch a trend, then definitely you go for the new technology. But securing the old technology, securing the new technology is your primary job, and that one has to definitely take as a priority and do. On the other hand, or if you ask me, what could be you no know, two, three, four years uh, strategy for any uh, CIO, I say, or a company? Uh, then uh, I would say uh, the enhancement into their uh, uh, property processes, first of all, because automation is the key. That's what I said, right? And uh, there are a lot of tools which are coming, uh, so they should look like uh, uh, to adopt the cloud first of all. Try to maintain as much as uh, low in-house things. They can go for the uh, big bang cloud for their old tools, their servers. And if it is not possible, then they should, you know, try to uh, adopt uh, a strategy where they can use the resources from OEM straight away because OEM has their own cloud with their own security, and you don't need to, you know, go into that. You are assured because somebody is taking care of that. But it's OEM, so I think that strategy is. Sure enough. So that is from the technology front, and of course, safety technology is a different one, which is should be on the top there. So all in all, uh, cloud uh, along with uh, automation and cyber security uh, is going to be the tech priority in the coming years. Absolutely. Thank you, sir, for joining at Six TV. It was great interacting with you. It has been an insightful uh, session and discussion for our Six TV audience. Uh, thank you for your insights. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity, and it was you know quite interesting questions, which are you know kind of trendy questions, and then yeah. we have to involve you to those. Thanks for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.